So the C function is another function that can be used to create vectors of objects. And you can think of C as kind of as standing for concatenate uh, because it can be used to kind of concatenate things together. So for example, I can create an object called X uh, by concatenating 0.5 and 0.6, and that will give me a numeric vector uh, of length 2 where the first element is 0.5 and the second element is 0.6. Uh, in the second example here, I've got a logical vector where I'm concatenating tr true and false. Um, so shorthand for true and false, you can use T and F, capital T and capital F. So these two lines give you the same object. Um, you can create a character vector by uh, concatenating a bunch of characters. Um, you can create an integer vector by creating a sequence with the colon operator. And you can also create, create a vector of complex numbers uh, where the I is a special symbol which indicates imag the imaginary part of the complex number. Um, so using the vector function, you can also create uh, a, a vector uh, of a certain type and a certain length. So here I'm going to create a numeric vector of length 10. Um, and by default, it will initialize the vector with a default value. And for numeric vectors, the default value is 0. So what happens if you take a vector, if you create a vector and you mix two different types of objects? Um, and so the general rule is that R will kind of create the least common denominator uh, vector. So it will not give you an error, but what will happen is that it will coerce the vector to be the, the class that's kind of the least common denominator. So it's here in this first example, I've gone from concatenating the number 1.7 and the letter A. So clearly these are not of the same class. Um, one is numeric and the other is character. So the least common denominator here is going to be character. And so, we're, so what you're going to get is that Y is going to be a character vector where the first uh, element is going to be the string 1.7 and the second element is going to be the, the letter A. Uh, so in the second example here, I've got I'm concatenating true, which is a logical, and two, which is a numeric. Um, and so what's going to happen here is that you're going to get a numeric vector, and the true is going to be converted into a number. And so how does that happen? What, so and the and by the, the convention in R, true is represented as the number one, and false is re represented as the number zero. And so what you're going to get here is a vector one two. Lastly, this last example here, I'm concatenating the letter A uh, and the logical true. And so here, the least common denominator, again, is going to be character. And so the, ve the vector that you end up with is the vector where the first element is A, and the second element is the string true, so T-R-U-E. It's not going to be a logical. So you need to be a little bit aware of the types of coercion that can occur in R when you mix different types of elements in a vector. And uh, because you won't get an error, uh, but, but the coercion will happen behind the scenes. Um, that, in the previous slide, we talked about a kind of an implicit coercion that occurs behind the scenes, but you can explicitly coerce objects from one class to another using functions that usually start with the word as. So for example, if you want to convert something to a numeric, you can use a function called as.numeric. Uh, and if you want to convert something into character, you can use the function as.character. Now, if you apply these functions, so if you apply as.numeric to a numeric vector, uh, nothing will happen. So here, uh, in this example, I'm starting off by creating an object called x, which is a sequence of 0 to 6. So this is, gonna, this is an integer sequence, as you can see, uh, when I call class on the object. But I want to convert it into a numeric sequence. Um, and so I can call as.numeric on x, and you can see that it prints out 0, 1, through 6, which looks like an integer object, uh, but it's actually going to be numeric. Or I can convert it into a logical. Um, and so I can say as.logical on it, and what happens? Well, as you can see, the convention is that 0 is false, and any number that's greater than 0 is going to be true. So here I've got, a, when I convert to logical, I get false, and then everything else is true. Uh, when I call as.character on x, it takes all the numbers and, and converts them into characters. So now I've got the string 0, the string 1, 2, etc. Uh, and finally, when I, if I call as.complex, uh, I, it, this is fairly straightforward because you can um, all it does is says that you have a complex number where all the imaginary components are zero. Uh, now, you, coercion will, notice doesn't always work, uh, and when it doesn't work, you get uh, what are called NA values. So nonsensical coercion will result in NA. So for example, if I take the vector ABC and call as dot numeric, well, there's really no way to convert the letters a, b, and c to numeric variables. Uh, and so what you'll get is a vector of na's and plus a warning. Um, uh, similarly, if you call as.logical on x, 
you're going to get a vector of NAs. The next data type I'm going to talk about is the list. Now, I mentioned lists a little bit earlier in this lecture. Uh, and the idea is that they're, they're like a vector, except that every element of a list could be a, a, an object of a different class. Uh, so that makes lists very, very handy for kind of carrying around different types of data. Um, and they're very useful in R, uh, and they become very common, uh, especially when in conjunction with other types of functions that we're going to learn about. So here I'm creating a list called x. I'm uh, using the list function, which is a which can be used to construct a list. And the first element is a numeric value, numeric uh, object of one. The second element is a character letter a. Third is a logical, and the fourth is a complex number. So this is not a problem with lists. And when I auto print the list, you'll see that it prints out a little bit differently. It doesn't print out like a vector because every element is different. Um, so you can see that in the double brackets here. Th so the the elements are indexed by double brackets. So the first element is the vector 1, the second element is a vector with a, the third element is a vector with true, and the fourth element is a vector with the complex number uh, 1 plus uh, 4i. So uh, lists are indexed. You'll, you'll notice that in, elements of the list will have double brackets around them, uh, and elements of other vectors just have the single brackets. So that's one way to separate a list from other types of vectors.